Hi, in the name of Christ, how are you doing? It's your girl, Cran K. It took me a very long amount of time to even record because I didn't want to um, just start speaking because I'm very, very demotivated. Uh, I've been wrenched out of my spirit energy by the observation of the deeds of certain of my family members in the spirit. You guys know, well, if at all you've been following me for any amount of time, that the Lord kind of reveals to me what people are doing when they start doing it by the Holy Spirit. I just want to come on here and demotivate people from ever commencing with sorcery. I wanted to speak Sitswana because I'm actively avoiding some American guy and an audience that is non my language speaking just to minimize the number of people that based on hearing what I say just go and bewitch my content. But the world is full of witches and there are many of them also in South Africa that speak Tswana. So I was just like, whatever. Uh, if I'm going to reach people, I might as well just like reach them all um, and deal with the few witches among them rather than like entirely extract one particular audience out of a conversation altogether basically the world at large that is not in south africa and black that you know doesn't speak our languages so i'm just gonna go and fire away uh perhaps maybe people might be inspired to stop even with their witchcraft upon listening to me since they love like rolling around with their monitoring spirits witchcraft uh i told you i spoke yesterday at length about how it is that i for the life of me don't understand why i have to deal so much with witches instead of just living my la vida loca instead of just living my life and carrying on jifela as normal with you know things it is precisely to get people to the place where they will realize it's a mess it's a mess. It's a royal mess. It's calamitous and it breaks vases and jars that are of great value. And then there's a lot of regret that comes with it following. So when I was at WITS, I studied a commercial degree, EPCOM, all right? And one of the like most poignant lessons that I uh, gained from Ecos One was this law of diminishing marginal returns. Bear with me, I'm going to explain to you what it all is about, okay? Basically, the law of diminishing marginal returns suggests that with every unit of additional, uh, with, it, with every new additional unit of something uh, that you add to an ecosystem, there is a decrease in the level of utility or satisfaction that you gain out of that ecosystem. So my lecturer used an example with food, a burger, and so I shall go on and use my lecturer's example because it helped me understand standard imagine when if you're hungry right like famished you haven't eaten all day and then you go to the mcdonald's and you purchase for yourself 10 burgers because you're that hungry so hungry that you imagine that you're going to need 10 burgers to satiate yourself when you eat the first burger what happens out of that first bite of that first burger there is a great deal of satisfaction that you gain out of consuming that burger because you are famished remember you're very hungry uh, the second burger if you're still kind of you know hungry you will gain satisfaction out of eating it but less satisfaction than you did with the first burger because already the first burger has done part of the job of filling you up so you are no longer basically gimbaring you are no longer hyper consuming because you're super famished Third burger, same story, some level of satisfaction if you're still hungry, but not as much as the first and second burger, and so on and so forth. By the time you get to the 10th burger, if at all you still have it in you to get to the 10th burger, you are basically eating slowly now, like the way that a child would play around with their food, broccoli on their plate, just like dicing it around, uh, irritating mom because they don't want to eat their veggies. By the time you get to that delicious 10th burger, it's not so delicious anymore because you are full. You are satiated. And so there commences then a decline in your satisfaction from that burger. And at some point you even begin to like plateau altogether, right? Well, when you get to that level of plateauing, that is when you know when to stop. When there's no when to stop, you know, when they try to demotivate people from gambling uh, in this country, they say when there's no when to stop. Sorcery is exactly like that, gambling. And the Lord has grace and mercy understanding over people who dabble with it at first because they're curious or because they are desperate in life. Like something has happened and so they find themselves in, an, in a funny knot ne? and then they, they tempt themselves in this way. They allow themselves to be taken by the tsunami of Usatan type thing. God, the Lord has mercy on your sins and 
he tends to make things fall apart on your behalf to make you realize that this thing is not even all that great it doesn't work not at least at the height or the level that you want it to work and when then you don't respond appropriately you're gonna find yourself in some hot water anyway back to the law of diminishing marginal returns each new unit of a burger that you add decreases the level of satisfaction every single new time but um, unfortunately uh, the thing about witchcraft is that just like a person who is basically a glutton that imagines they need 10 burgers even though historically they've never they've never been able to stomach 10 burgers what happens with them is that they overestimate the value of something when they deep down inside know that it's not any good it's not any good so you can't just continue to eat and lessons get learned from the second time you go the first time they dabble with sorcery they gain a lot of satisfaction because here is the supernatural means to get what you want to understand when nobody has to see you and when then you succeed to get it then you think oh my goodness i can use this stuff to get everything else in my life i knew a guy that i used to work with at um, mtn i had a crush on him thought he was a christian turns out that he was not he was lukewarm he was dabbling do you understand he got made into an elder at grace bible church for the life of me i don't even know how that became a thing this man inspired me a lot to you know strengthen myself in christ so that i might be fit for him because remember i said i had a crush on him but the lord eventually revealed to me a whole bunch of sorcery that he put on me and where it started where did it start he was struggling to find a job he was praying to god and wasn't coming around fast enough the lord says wait on me i will renew your strength mount you up with wings like eagles run you and not faint you walk you and not grow you weary basically am anything Eventually, you will inherit that which neither eye has seen nor ear has heard, neither mind conceived, what I have set apart for you since you waited. Didn't want to wait. Long suffering with a spirit of patience never ever finished its work in him. And so therefore, he was like, no, whatever. I'm going to go and consult a uh, sangoma. I am going to go and consult a, a medium or something to go and get me a J-O-B. Uh, and out of this desperation, he then did exactly that. And he was uncomfortable and easy because he got raised in the church. And so therefore the church was like, no, we don't practice witchcraft. These things are an abomination to Emmanuel. So you don't then as a Christian professor, for somebody who professes Christianity, just like leisurely or with any relative ease visit a sangoma you have to look over your back you have to google it in secret you can't just ask people you have to find out where you can find one in very below the belt ways let me move on to part two you guys because i'm not gonna rush through this message